Hola mi gente, Ms. Malcolm Hughes here. Welcome, welcome back. Happy New Year, it's 2022. This is my first video of the new year. Um, some videos have been posted, um, but they are videos from last year. This is the first time I'm sitting down in a new year to do a video review, and I'm excited, even though the book is one that I finished last year. And the book that we will be reviewing and discussing today is the Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. Look at the back, y'all. We are girls, or are we demons? Are we going to die, or are we going to survive? Ugh. Well, let's just get into what the book was about before I start gushing. 16-year-old Decca lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she becomes a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Decca prays for red blood so she can finally feel like she belongs. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the color of impurity, and Decca knows she will face a consequence worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to her with a choice, stay in the village and to submit to her fate, or leave to fight for the emperor and an army of girls just like her. They are called Alaki, near mortals with rare gifts and they are the only ones who can stop the emperor's greatest threat. Knowing the dangers that lie ahead yet yearning for acceptance, Decca decides to leave the only life she's ever known. But as she journeys to the capital to train for the biggest battle of her life, she discovers that the great walled city holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem to be, not even Decca herself. In this bold and immersive fantasy, a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare to tame her and discovers that she is her own fiercest weapon. Period. So, uh, the Gilded Ones. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. As it says, we have our protagonist. We get to journey with her. And it starts off initially too detailed. I must say this. I don't often read fantasy and it's because sometimes where they place the emphasis on details are just places where I don't think it should be. Like I'm, I care about seeing and the development of the world but I'm really big on character development and that character arc which is why I usually prefer literary fiction and not necessarily fantasy but there are some fantasy books that I really enjoy this being one. But when it first started, I was like, is this too detailed? Do I care about these details? And arguably, there were some details just throughout that I was like, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. But they do help to build the world in which the story takes place. And if that's really important to you, if you really like those details so you can fully visualize what does the place look like? Where is there trees? What is this monument? like? look like so you can envision it better this will be great for that but that was one of the things i did not love however so when the story first starts that's one of the details we really get to learn about the internal battle that dika or deka however you pronounce it that dika is having and we get to see that even though she's in the society she doesn't look like everyone else she still has some folks who support her and she still has those who say she belongs even though she has never felt like a belonger but it's now time for the purity ceremony she's hoping that her blood runs red she'll finally be able to be one of the maidens to really belong there unfortunately for our protagonist her blood runs gold um <laughs> but even before her blood runs gold something happens so that people think that she's probably impure so we follow her, she decides to go fight for the Empire. I'll continue before I touch on that. So she decides to go fight for the Empire. While she's on this journey, she learns a lot about her history and her mother who she's never known. And, or she, who she knew, but her mother died before this impurity ceremony. So she didn't get to live with her mother for forever or for a very long time the way she would have desired. And she gets to be with all these other women who are like her, who are fierce, who have these superior powers. And they get to train and do things that they wouldn't have been able to do in their home countries or home societies. And that's super important because there is a lot of women empowerment and 
upliftment of women and feminist ideals included in this book. I really love the way that they trained. I love the suspense. You really never knew, especially there's a main character called White Hands. That's the one who comes to her with the proposition. And you really don't know where she stands the entire time. You're not always certain of who's good and who's bad. And the twists and turns of this are excellent. I also really love the pacing and the story development. The fact that when you get new information, it comes to you in a way that's not overwhelming. It makes you clap, like it makes you grab onto the story and really want to know what will happen. I love that. I love the progression. You could really imagine these interactions between these characters and how they were feeling. That was super important. You never once wondered, like, I wonder how they feel about this. You knew and I really appreciated that aspect. I didn't hate the ending. I really enjoyed it. It did seem like it progressed a little bit. Like at the end, I really wanted to know a bit more, but it was a good ending. There is another book coming out, so it was appropriate. Um, I know someone in their review said that this book could have ended sooner. I personally disagree. I really like that we got to see it through. And I also felt like we got a good understanding of what would be happening next. We've learned about this battle. Oh, there was so many good surprises at the end. That battle, oh, so good. We learned that what you imagined was not really what you imagined, what they were fighting for, was not what they thought they were fighting for. And oh, that was all so great. The history, Decca really finding out who she was and who her ancestors are. And I know you can hear the excitement in my voice. It was so great. I really enjoyed this. Um, I know like on Instagram there were some bad reviews going around. I don't understand it at all. Um, this is one of those books I will ride for. If anyone has any opposition, I'm willing to sit down and debate with anyone about it, about why they're wrong and why it's good. That's how I'm writing for this book. Um, and for, the, for it to be our author's debut book, I thought she did a great job. Um, she has historically written for the screen and I could tell that the way this is written I could tell that it was written by someone who wrote for the screen was well the pacing was great um, and I think you know adding those details again does help you visualize it so it just I could already see it on the screen so I, I just knew that would be coming and it is I'm excited for the next book to come out I hope it doesn't disappoint me the way some books do <laughs> when you love the first one and then the second one in the series comes out and you're like hmm but I'm hoping that doesn't happen here. We shall see. It's coming out this year in May. Um, so that's exciting. So I've obviously said great things about this book. Let's get into the things I did not love. So going back to what I was saying earlier about a protagonist willing to go and sacrifice herself for this empire that hates her, that hates her and hates people like her and has done horrible things to her and to people like her, I don't support that. I do not support that on any level. I have a core disbelief in people who have been subjected to oppression, sacrificing themselves for their oppressors. No, no. So that for me, I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, um, immediately. But as this progressed, as the story went on, I'm not gonna say I made up for it. I'm going to say that I still really enjoyed it and I like the turns that happened. I appreciated that. Another thing that I really didn't enjoy, so that's three things so far, right? So sometimes it felt too detailed for my preference. Don't agree with people who've been oppressed, sacrificing themselves for their oppressors in real life or in fantasy. Also, there was a little bit of a white savior complex in here. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it's rooted in women empowerment, so it gets tricky, right? It gets tricky to kind of differentiate the two, but it was there. It was there. The woman who's like protecting her and always like, mm, mm, not mad at it for women empowerment, but it, meh, it was a little like, Mm, uncomfortable but <laughs> I appreciate it the women empowerment aspect and if all if any of us are to truly be free we can move away from color I wouldn't be mad at that at all right so 
boom i i appreciated the story overall but people of color can save themselves thank you but i did like the fact that it was women working together of all ethnicities and that was beautiful but again overall i love this um if i really enjoy the book so if i had to say read it now read it when you have time or read it if you want i would definitely say read it now if you've been listening to this video you knew that was coming definitely read it now worth the read i enjoyed it if you saw my uh youtube short you'll see my top 10 videos of 20 sorry my top 10 books of 2021 and this was one of them so you saw that you already knew where i was going with this review but i really enjoyed it i would say read it now and then i would say come talk to me about it because i want to hear your thoughts and i want to discuss it so that is it for me y'all more book reviews to come a lot of things to come if you saw my video you know that i'm doing the year of malcolm x where i'm reading nine books on the life of malcolm x and unpacking that i'll be hosting meetings where we can discuss the works that we read also gonna have a page on my website dedicated exclusively to that um so it'll host a number of different things there will always be the meeting link and what's happening with that also additional resources you'd have additional background and context on the works that we're reading so super excited about that also gonna have my youtube live series where i will be talking about different places i've traveled what I loved about those places, what I made out of joy, just information that you should know in case you're visiting those places. That's coming. My podcast is still coming. I have a new name for that. It's called Books and Bachata. If you know me, you know the books, you know I love to dance bachata. So those two things are merged. It is life lessons I've learned the hard way, but mostly from books and bachata. So that's coming this year as well. Also for Black History Month, I have something super special that I haven't announced yet, but that is coming. So I'm just super excited for the year. I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that you all are reading. Um, and I hope you're reading with me. So that's it for me for now. I hope everyone is so, so great. And until next time, as always, I'm Ms. Malcolm Hughes, one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. And I hope that you all are remembering to give time time, to be kind to each other, and having the best days of your life on purpose. Adobo! Adios! Also, for those of you inquiring, I do still have buttons. My Ms. Malcolm Hughes pins and the details on how to get those are below.